how have you been sleeping, Sarah? Pretty good. Why? Have you been dreaming? Not really, actually. Oh, that was, that, <laughs> does that throw throw things off? That was that was a quote from Russ Cole. Oh, he doesn't sleep. He sleep. He just dreams. Dream. How would you feel if I just walked around quoting him like all day? Seriously, or <laughs> as a joke, because that's two very different things. I'm gonna go with seriously. But if I started actually dressing up like him, although you did a pretty good cosplay of him recently yeah it's it's pretty accurate i mean yes i i don't know if you can even tell the difference to honestly be honest. you could do this show as rush cole yeah we're on episode two which is called seeing things what could that mean that could mean a lot maybe rust is yeah. ha like hallucinating you know we did see some weird kind of things happening with him seeing that uh missing child's Billboard, billboard yeah. and also that little girl i don't know if he's like seeing, seeing things, things or if those were real things that he was associating with his daughter exactly you have your thinking caps on i'm ready uh, yeah <laughs> i got my texas shirt on in honor of matthew mcconaughey he's a big oh, longhorns nice. fan shout out to all the fellow texans out there who are subscribed to the channel you're beloved you beloved <laughs> beloved beloved you're beloved by us. Sure. Us. <laughs> not that everyone else is not. Right. <laughs> Ohioans, fellow Ohioans as well, and everyone else out there watching. So at the end of the last episode, we had the big reveal that there is a new case. Yep. That matches exactly what happened. What, we, what was it? 17 years ago or something? Yes. And it seems like the cops might suspect Rust of being involved in some way. They're mm -hmm. trying to get information from both him and from Mart Martin. Yeah, I'm excited to see how they're going to keep handling the back and forth I know. of present day and past. And we kind of already know like how it ends, essentially. Yeah. Because um, they say, Rust. Rust says they save a bunch of kids from a house. Yeah. So my guess is that was like the killer's like lair. Is that where they're saving kids from? Yeah. But we still don't know who like the killer they caught was back then, so. Yeah, and I wonder if Martin will start to get the idea that they suspect Rust and how he'll react right. to that. Right, I know, because he's been sort of like, yeah, everything's fine, I'm doing my side gigs, I'm a PI investigator or whatever, but then you have Rust over here, drinking, smoking, looking Not a bit rough. Well. So two sides of the coin there. Don't forget, if you're enjoying this series, that we do have early access and full length reactions on patreon so feel free to check that out mm. um, otherwise i think we are ready to dive back in Ooh, we're gonna be seeing things like this episode <laughs> oh and the song again mm. yay <laughs> do you have any have you thought of like any theories or anything since we watched the first episode i don't know i feel like there's got to be more to woody harrelson's character i feel like he's not telling everything yeah. To the detectives investigating him. Uh. I lay awake thinking about women, my daughter, my wife. Your son just got your name on it like a, like a bullet. Mm. Or a nail on the road. Sorry I drift. More beer. That's why I like to drink alone. <laughs> One reason anyway. <laughs> about that sculpture thing. Yeah, nobody knew why that thing was in the playhouse. Was it, what, what if it was put there after? Maybe it's a message to them. Maybe. A cat and mouse game. Like we know that you're on to us, whatever. Like someone's having a conversation, you know? Yeah. Well, we notified the deceased mother. Horrible, horrible thing. What we're in the clutches of and, and it's me. That's sad. Yeah. What about her father? Did they have a relationship? Why wouldn't a father bathe his own child? We, uh, we were just wondering how they got on, ma'am. He died on the road. When was the last time you talked to her? I thought things were getting better. Got away from Charlie. Said you'd been going to church. Do you remember where that church was? Yeah. Oh. Mrs. Kelly. No. Hell, very full grease. Oh, look at her fingers. Her, yeah, her, her nails. I worked in dry cleaning for 20 years. And chemicals. Oh, that sucks. That's what's wrong with my nails. Jeez. Oh man. Your mom's still alive? 
Maybe. Ooh, Doesn't know. No relationship. My dad, I had about uh, six inches on him. <laughs> and even in the end, I still think he could have taken me. You know, there was a time that men didn't air their bullshit to the world. You know, it just wasn't a part of their job. I think a part of Russ' problem was there was things he needed that he couldn't admit to. So we talked to the victim's friend next, I believe. Miss Carla. How was she? Thin, loopy. Maybe she said she found a church. The church. And it comes up again. Probably not a real church, right? Maybe not. She uh, she mentioned some place down south, like around Spanish Lake. Is that a corduroy jacket? <laughs> Looking fresh there. What do we know about him? It's prost, artistic, religious in some kind of way. And this dude in New Orleans cut up his girl, felt remorse, tried to piece her back together. Oh no. This has scope. How she articulated a personal vision. Vision is meaning. He's on to something. Oh. Yeah, we gotta find that church. There's just it's so vast. I feel like it's gotta be so hard to find. Right. Look at the, I mean look at this. You know the job. You're looking for narrative. Parcel evidence. Establish a timeline, build a story. What is that? Day after day. Just so, yeah, just two totally different <laughs> morning routines. Yeah. It'd be hard to think about anything else. I feel like, especially if you're Martin, you know, like, how do you separate these yeah. two things? Why didn't you leave when I had Chris call? Maybe he liked them. Because it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. Exactly. I'm being around your family. I was married, Marty, for three years. We had a baby girl. She died. Car accident. Up. She was two years old. Oh. oh, damn. So not what we suspected at all. That's horrible, though. I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I mean, it wasn't you guys. It was just me. Hey, you were married the once, just the once. Came close another time. Lori, Maggie introduced us. Oh. It broke off. I don't mean to, but I, I can be critical. You know, that, that's not good for them to be around me. Yeah, I think the job does that to a lot of guys. Well, I can't say the job made me this way. More like me being this way made me right for the job. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. When you reach a certain age, you know who you are. Now I live in a little room out in the country behind a bar. Oh, or four nights a week in between, I drink. Damn. Kind of a sad life. Yeah, unless he likes it. I don't. That way. I don't know. Like I can't tell. After all these years, there's a there's a victory in that. Maybe he just wants to be left alone. Maybe. Stop this cutie for speed. Fifty two minutes later, back in her dorm room. I don't know that her roommate has come home. You know how I knew that she was in the room? She stuck her finger up my ass. Yikes! You gotta decompress before you can go being a family man. Sometimes you gotta get your head right. Might as well stop by. <gasps> oh no. It's probably the girl that we saw. They did kind of share a, a little look. I have a surprise for you. Oh uh, yeah? Marty. Yeah. So the family man's got some secrets. Uh -huh. You gotta take your release where you Find it. He doesn't seem very apologetic about That's it. That's a good one. In the end, it's for the good of the family. Oh, oh. Give me a break. Interesting take on that, Marty. Do you think he's still married? I don't know. And he thought Cole was a delusional one. For the good of the family. Yeah, there she is. Back to your present. Damn. What would Maggie think? What? Handcuffs. <laughs> Give me a break. He's kinky. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent. Oh, God. It's a little cliche, I think. <laughs> it's all for the family, Sarah. It's all for the family. You definitely have a career in law enforcement. I knew there was something up. You want it? She was there very briefly. And we got full nudity as well. Wow. It did say. All for the family, Sarah. All for the family. <laughs> How long has this been going on for? 
Probably a while. And if not her, maybe what somebody else. What if it's still going on? You think? You like know? Like his, his family still doesn't know? His wife right. still doesn't know? Mm-mm-mm. Well. Disappointing, dis- Marty. Yeah, disappointing. You have a nice family. Yep. I... And you're throwing it all away. Can't you do something else? Go play golf? I don't know. Poker. Visions you mentioned. Oh, shit, I thought... You knew. I told Marty about them, you know, down the line. Flashbacks, neural damage. You know, high intensity drug traffic in area. Oh. That is terrifying. Yeah, but it's just all, that happening all of a sudden. I said four years undercover. <laughs> you know what that means? I'm telling you what he did. Well, those files are still sealed, huh? <sighs> Shit. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> So, yeah, Four I mean, years under that that's crazy in and of itself. Yeah. Mmm, it's a girl that gave him the quaaludes. You wanna play us? Quaaludes. And we'll say two hundred for the bottle. Damn. Now you wanted something else? What about rough trade? Scary guys, girls talk. He's still thinking about the job. Seen plenty of guys that get touchy. Something sets them off and they're like little boys. If she was gaming I-10 Southside, heard of this place. Ooh. Sounds spooky. Like a sanctuary. The lake. Kind of strange. <laughs> like you might be dangerous. Well, of course I'm dangerous. <laughs> I can do terrible things to people. With impunity. What would you do last Meanwhile, night? Meanwhile, I called up here late. Thinking about dropping by. Where were you? Mm. I was out with girlfriends. You're jealous? Kind of sounds Don't like it. Stupid. Yeah. There's a crazy man out there. And uh, he's killing women. He's protecting his mistress. <laughs> what a gentleman. Yeah. We're thinking that he's been doing this a while. I can't meet a nice man at home. I meant that since you're married, I need to be considering my options as a young woman. Yikes. You just want your cake and to eat it too. Mm-hmm. How good is cake if you can't eat it? Oh my God. <laughs> Marty, you son of a bitch. Morning. Late night, Marty? Yeah, I think I might've found something good. Bunny ranch down south, on Spanish Lake. You'd wash up, you got some pussy on you. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> It's, it's perceptive. Oh, that's Maggie, huh? What's with your fucking nose? Nothing, man. He's defensive. Are you saying that's wife? The that high tide you're walking in with? You're wearing the same clothes as you did yesterday. Couple with the fact that I ain't stupid. He's a detective after all. You don't say fuck all about my wife. You got some self-loathing to do this morning. <laughs> <laughs> But it ain't worth losing your hands over. You know, I just apply a couple pounds of pressure. Ooh. <laughs> Don't mess with him, Marty. <laughs> Damn, he is cool under pressure. Yeah. Makes sense. Given Doesn't his get background. phased. And they work for seven years. Oh. And Marty has the audacity to get mad. I know. When he's the one sleazing Whatever. around. I got a specific location for this place. I'm going to have to ask for directions. Maybe you could just follow your nose. <laughs> I won't lie. It, it, however we left it, he had some moves. Looking for a little bunny ranch down around these parts, y'all. Uh, know where we could find it? No, sir. I'll tell you this. Russ had about as sharp an eye for weakness as I ever <laughs> seen. Yep. I'll be right back. What's he, What's gonna, he doing? What's he gonna do? Is he gonna rough him up? Oh my god. Damn. Here we go. Did he kill that other guy? <laughs> uh, he knocked him out. Take 353 three South. I'm gonna exit off the shoulder before we get to the 14. Yeah, he wasn't lying when he was holding up Marty. <laughs> right, yeah. I know. What is this, some kind of hillbilly bunny ranch? You might want to talk to Sheriff Bilson before you start tossing accusations around. No, I got nothing against hillbilly. <laughs> Something happened to a girl and we need to know if any of you knew her. Something happened? You know about that woman found outside of Erath? 
Did something happen to Dory? She was nice to me when I first came around. Gave me tips and stuff. About what? Oh, she can't say too much. She been going to church. What church? Back to church. We're gonna need to question any girls might have known her. That's a tougher ask than you think. Well, ma'am, it's the best way to get us to leave. <laughs> That's exactly what to say. You said she left a bag. Oh. Yeah. Can I see it? It all goes back to that damn church. We need to find it. I'm still not, yeah, I feel like it's not an actual church. No. That girl's not 18. Sheriff, know you got underage working here? Ooh. You want to know Beth's situation? Before she ran out on her uncle? Ooh. It's a woman's body, ain't it? A woman's choice. Well, she don't look like a woman. Why is it you add business to the mix and boys like you can't stand the thought? It's because suddenly you don't own it the way you thought you did. Ooh, it's intense. I mean, obviously an underage girl shouldn't be working, but it is interesting with his relationship with that other girl. Do something mm. else. I saw the king in yellow moving through the forest. This is her diary, Marty. You know the sheriff has got a stake in this place, too. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's messed up. The king's children were marked. They became his angels. Mm. Yeah, it sounds like she's hallucinating. What if he was dosing a regular? Over a period of time, up in the dose little by little without her knowing it. What's this? <gasps> oh. Uh, there it is. Bingo. Well, we should go there. Yeah. It could be the church everyone mentioned. North Shore Psychiatric Hospital, Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock. That's where I'm from. Sophia. My daughter, she was on her tricycle. Claire and I turned on each other. And we... we we resented each other being alive, you know. I transferred from robbery to narco. Started hitting it, you know, 24 seven. Jeez. Three months I was ripping off couriers or ending up in a Ramada Inn with a couple of fucking eight balls. Damn. Oh yeah. Probably took his mind off of it. Somewhere in there, Claire left. Somewhere in there I emptied a, a nine into a crankhead for injecting his infant daughter with crystal. Oh my Fucking God. hell. State attorney, give me one chance to stay out of jail. We want to make you our wild man junkie. So they did. They made me a floater. You know, any agency or department needed a deep undercover narco. They got me. Mm. And there was no fucking expiration date, baby. In mm. February of 93, I killed three cartel men in the port of Houston. Damn, he's in some shit. Ended up at North Shore Psychiatric Hospital in Lubbock, Texas, which is kind of funny in its own right. Psych ward being in Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> I said, put me on homicide somewhere. Hmm. By then, I was owed quite a few pavers, and uh, Louisiana was what they had. And here wow. we are. He, wow. Why did he want this? Homicide, I, I know. Man, yeah, it seems like he's got like permanent. Yeah, did he said, right? Damage. Brain damage. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's only how much drugs he did at that time. Yeah. So much. Why homicide? Oh, something I saw at North Shore. The body is not one member, but many. Are they many, but of one body? I was just trying to stay a part of the body now. <laughs> Grandpa, I can't tell if it's working. You'll know, honey. Things like that didn't happen in these parts when I was young. People said ma'am and sir. Everyone wasn't out in the street yelling about their rights. <laughs> I'm just saying if there's a problem, you can talk to me. You know that. Oh, there's a problem. I know what it's like to be married to a man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that you need to get your cable fixed and stop confusing me with your soap operas. <laughs> well... There is some issues there. Also, I feel like someone should be watching the kids. <laughs> I've seen kids today, all in black, wearing makeup. You know, throughout history, I bet every old man probably said the same thing. <laughs> and old men die, and the world keeps spinning. <laughs> <laughs> so I doesn't like his follower-in-law too much. I got this lead. I wanted to 
checkup on. I told you about it. He didn't tell me anything about it. This is a family day. Okay, well, how about we all head back then? Hmm. All right, sweetheart. Oh, this is... It's so tense. Tense. Awkward. Man, that was a tense family oh, gathering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I could feel that. Uh, He's so cool. <laughs> Striking out a lot. Yeah. Oh, oh here we go. shit. There is nowhere else I want to be. I wonder if you even know your line. Shit, I gotta wade through on a daily basis. Bring me this feel bad for me crap. I come home to one place where there's supposed to be peace and calm and you throw this shit. Who told you that? It's not always that way. It's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be what I want. It's supposed to help me. We do help you. You want me to talk about the woman? Had antlers and maybe you'll stop with the poor me little whiny bullshit. Oh, my. Is that really how you want to play this? I think you're the greatest woman I ever met. Sometimes I think you might have a penchant for self-pity. And right now I need you to be strong so that I can do my job. You have developed some sort of selective deafness. Yikes. Alcohol is not good in these situations. <laughs> yeah. You and your mom thinks you're a ball buster. Don't oh. <laughs> adding fuel to the to the fire. I think he regretted that one as soon as he said it. What are they listening to? Go to the kitchen. Hmm. Are you coming? Yeah, of course. I'm starving. I'm sure they could hear all that. Yeah. Right. There were there was playing pretend, but they were saying some pretty. You know, I think about my daughter now. Ted stuff. When she was spared. Sometimes I feel grateful. Doctor said she didn't feel a thing. Went, went straight into a coma. She slipped off into another deeper kind. Isn't that beautiful way to go out? <laughs> yeah, trouble with dying later is you've already grown up. Damage is done. <laughs> I think of the, the hubris it must take to yank a soul out of non existence into this. I asked her, my daughter, she, uh, she spared me the, the sin of being a father. I just didn't want to look at so, that. Yeah. I guess that's how he, he's been able to cope with it. Yeah, rational, yeah. Hey, morning, Marty. Hey. Majors, introduce me. New flying squad. We've been tasked with investigating crimes with possible occult links. And they want to see what we have on the Lane case. Uh-huh. You know me, I don't see the connection between two dead cats and a murdered woman. But then I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> We're not stepping on your toes, Marty. We just got the mandate. We got to compare notes with what you got. Xerox all you want. Make you feel like good cops. <laughs> You too, my office. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Are they in trouble? You got an opinion about anything? <laughs> Keep it to yourself. You hold on to it. <laughs> this god bothering his shit. It's a political circle jerk. You know this. You got a suspect? Give us some more guys to follow up KAs, track records. So our bosses don't want you at all. You understand? I don't want you. You are upright only by the grace of this man's reputation. No, no, you got leads, you got a timeline. You know what I got? I got a whodunit where my two detectives are stalling, and I got a brand new task force wants to take it off our hands. We have a lead. Oh, boss. for Christ's sake, fuck off, Cole. It's your call. He can give it up? <laughs> <laughs> Is <he> his hand? <laughs> well, you're a smart ass with your mouth shut. We got a lead on a church. Right? Our Vic was spending a lot of time there. Without a suspect, they're just gonna stop asking questions, Marty, and they're gonna give orders. Give us the rest of the month. I'll try. They got a month to solve this? Two weeks. And then you two start catching again. Y'all yeah. are wanting to ask about that big throwdown in the woods. Right now, we're just trying to track the case. How Cole worked it, especially. Which indicates you think I'm too thick to realize that y'all are trying to jam somebody up. You're onto something new. There we go. Yep, he saw it. So Cole didn't want to give it to the task force. Did you? No. 
I did not. <sighs> yeah, they both have a stake in it for sure. There's no date on this flyer, which is strange. Yeah. Saved enough there. <sighs> a structure. That could be something. Wow, that is out here. Out in the middle of nowhere. They're not gonna end it no. there, are they? Don't end it there, okay. okay. About to say. <laughs> oh, it's burned. Power to dispose of evidence. Oh, <laughs> that's a cool shot. Oh, is he just seeing things? Yeah. Oh. Pull it together, man. Come on, Cole. I, I could always tell what was real or what wasn't, you know. So when I'd see things, fuck, man, I just roll with it. <laughs> Still see things? No. Oh. No, they stopped altogether. Hmm. After I was clean a couple years. Spooky. I know. Say no kind of anything. Can we get at least one clue? Yeah. Some lead. Yeah, back then, the visions. Yeah, most of the time I was convinced that I'd lost it. But there were other times. Oh, oh, the antlers. Yeah. Got rope around the wrists. I thought I was mainlining the secret truth of the universe. <laughs> All right, that's something to go on. But but where do we go from here? Yeah. Like, clearly they were there. It's related. Right, so you got to follow the trail, I guess. So I wonder if they just, this person moves from, like, location to location, like they were saying. Yeah, and this has been going on for a while, because he said that this was probably burnt down. Yeah. A while ago. Is that it? I feel like that's the end. Dang. Damn. Another good one. It's really heating up. I know it is. But now it's stressful because there's like there's only two weeks. Yeah. The pressure's on now. Ooh, I feel like this was uh, an eye-opening episode. You know, I think I said it in the last one. I always felt that there was something a little bit more to Martin. You know, he just seemed a little bit too nice and put together. Mm. And eventually we started to see his life kind of unravel a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Like compared to Rust, he seemed to have this nice family life, but that has quickly fallen apart. Yeah. Especially with his wife, Maggie. Mm -hmm. Tensions are tough there. He's now seeing a mistress, which he thinks it's for the better good for his family which is kind of a weird thing and he he holds that perspective many many years later yeah to so, this day yeah it just feels like he's never changed or has never felt no. bad about what he did which is making me not like him very much i know <laughs> what did the wife say he had um selective hearing selective hearing it just feels like he knows best is, is how yeah. he thinks but we also learned a lot about rust in this one we've yeah. I mean, we found out what happened to his daughter which was completely we were completely off right. <laughs> I, we thought that mm -hmm. maybe she had been a victim of a kidnapping or something but still i mean equally horrible but yeah and just tragic and just all the stuff he went through but it was interesting that he said the visions went yeah. away after he was clean for a while I know. But he's, do you think, so do you think he only Just indulges drinks. in alcohol and my guess what, so. cigarettes? And I thought it was interesting when he said, like, how he lives now. He, he feels it's like a, what, is he, what did he say? It's like a, not a win for him. A but victory. A victory. So I just going from like all he experienced, maybe he just prefers to live a quiet life. I mean. It's kind of sad though, <laughs> at the same time. It, it feels sad, but. For someone like him with such a pessimistic view of the world, mm. I guess it it kind of like if that's how, what he needs to do to be able to survive in this world, like I guess good for him. Yeah, you know. But that was definitely interesting how he was able to deal with his, losing his daughter, like almost being happy that she didn't have to suffer in this mm. world. Right. After, I mean, after all he's seen, after all he's gone through. I wonder what it was like with it, like his relationship was like with his wife um, before everything happened. Before. 
I know. Because he said he's always been like this. So maybe it was rough as well. I don't mm -hmm. know. He even said he's he's reached that age of his life where he just feels like that is who he is and he can't change it. No. And so he's just going to do what he has to do to keep going. Yeah, and it seems like he's okay with it. Yeah. At this point, you know? Yeah, I mean, he looks a little rough and clearly, you know, he maybe has a bit of a drinking problem, but I guess, I mean, assuming that he is not related to this new murder at all, yeah. he doesn't seem to be doing anything to harm anyone. No. They both have a lot of issues. I know. Which is good. They're complex, mm -hmm. you know? They're not your classic hero types. Yeah, they were, they were clashing in this episode a lot more. You know, the whole intense scene with the, with the lockers. He didn't like how his world was being infiltrated by Cole, but mm -hmm. he made some, I mean, Cole, Cole made some, he was just, you know, speaking the truth. I feel like most people, even if they knew about it, they wouldn't bring it up, mm -hmm. but that's not how Rust is. No, <laughs> He'll yeah. say whatever he wants to say. He will speak his mind. I mean, we made some advancements in the case. We did. But I also feel like it was kind of a, step forward two steps back, back because i don't know where we go from here because the church doesn't really feel like it's leading to anything no like we do know that it's associated with the murder yeah but how do we find find them i know like how do we figure out like when was this when did that fire happen when did that building burn down it's almost like do you have to wait for something else to happen which sucks and they had such a hard time finding this place yeah and they even had a poster for it. I just feel like everything is, is so easy to hide in all of these, like the forest, the yeah. marshes. The swamps. The, it's just such a huge, mm -hmm. empty environment. Yeah. Good place for cult members to hide, I guess. <laughs> Rust suspects that Dory, uh, Dora was being dosed with something, maybe even more over time right. to keep her just really out of it. Yeah. Which is interesting. So it seems like the theme could be this person lures individuals, maybe like lost souls, mm -hmm. who maybe are looking to get better, but then the weak. The weak. But what what do they want with them exactly? I know. Just to feel like powerful. The as the king is what right. they're called, presumably. The yellow king. Do they think they are some sort of god? Or pro in. prophet or something. Yeah, I know. There's a couple of different ways they can go mm. with that. Like, oh, cleansing the these individuals. They're saving their soul by doing what they're doing. And so now we have this new task force that's Ooh, kind of involved. Breathing down their necks, Cole and Martin. Yeah, they're being pushed. They don't seem like they're going to cause too much trouble, these guys. At least for now. Yeah. But we'll see if it gets closer to the deadline, how much information they have. Mm-hmm. Things might get a little dicey. What if they get kicked off the case, but they keep working it anyway? I can see that happening. That could happen. Both, but I mean, hey, despite the fact that um, this case was affecting Martin's personal life, he still, he had a chance to walk away from it. Yeah, yeah. And he still, he wanted to keep going with Cole, so. Oh, and I guess now uh, Martin has also caught on to the fact that something new has happened in present day. Is there a a chance that they come back together to solve the case in present that, day? That would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I think that covers most stuff. I feel like there's definitely a lot to talk about with this show. Yeah. But if we think of anything else, of course, we'll include that maybe in the next episode. Mm -hmm. But thank you all so much for watching. Yes. Episode number two. Done. Done, done and dusted. Huzzah. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.